Well, good morning and welcome to the Thought for the Day from the Lady Grove Church on this wonderful sunny 20th of July. Oh, I wonder how you're feeling today. I suppose this weather does sort of help things, but I must admit, I look at some of what's going on in the news and it does get a bit frustrating. We had, the, I noticed some some reporter of the Times yesterday accusing accusing this nation of Nazism by encouraging people to to wear masks. Nazism. I, I just I don't understand how there's any comparison between what happened in Germany pre Second World War and what's happening in this country. On the news there was the um, there's all the rubbish um, on the beaches and, and um, Michael's girlfriend who stayed with us this weekend said she just doesn't understand it. Well, it's never been this bad. Um, and, and yeah, I, I guess she's right. It's almost as though now lockdown has finished. We've been saving all our rubbish and have brought it all out in one go and dumped it on the beaches. And then there's um, people that work in shops complaining that they're getting ill-treated and shouted at and there was something on Facebook today from um, spotted in Didcot from from retailers that were just saying look you know, the person who's standing at the front door simply asking you to put a mask on before you come in um, they're probably scared because they don't want to do it um, but they're only trying to keep people safe Yesterday we looked at the parable of the weeds and I talked about the fact that, you know, from, from Jesus' um, conclusion of that, um, of that parable, the idea that, that the weeds won't get pulled up until the final harvesting, that indicates that the kingdom of God, as is now, sort of here, here but not fully here yet, um, is a sign that this is all part of God's plan. Weeds and wheat are meant to be living together. And sometimes I can't help but look and think to myself, I don't want to live amongst weeds. Can't you replant me? Can't you pull me out? If you're not going to pull the weeds out, can't you just pull me out and stick me in a little pot of my own? I'd be much happier like that. And then in preparing for this coming Sunday, one of which the readings is from Romans, I come across this. So this is Romans chapter 8. I hope I'm not going to do myself out of this coming Sunday sermon, but it spoke to me today as I was thinking about the world. Romans 8, beginning to read at 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we shall face death. We, sorry, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. I'll finish there. Because it was that bit. More than conquerors. More than. In many ways, this is like the adverts on telly. This is almost like our insurance policy that Christ has died and risen again. And he is with us. And he loves us. And that all the weeds that are around us cannot separate us from God's love. More than conquerors, 
Apparently the Greek, it's just a Greek word which really means more like hyper-conquerors or super-duper-conquerors. But I was, as I was thinking that word, not so much the more out then, but the conqueror. You can't conquer something unless you engage with it. A, an army can't conquer another army without fighting. And therefore, the only way we can truly discover God's faithfulness to help us conquer is by mixing with those sorts of people that complain about masks and lob litter on the floor and do all those things that make us frustrated or puzzled or hurt. And so we need to engage with them and conquer them or conquer their attitude. Now that may mean by challenging them about what they say or it might simply be by picking up the litter that they dropped. Thanking the person who asks you to put a mask on and saying how much you appreciate their concern for their customers. Little words, little actions. And we may think, well, what's the point? But God can use all those little words and actions to encourage those and to just assure them that they too are loved. So whatever we've got going today, let's see what we can do to be more than conquerors in this world that has its fair share of weeds. Let's pray. So Lord, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for the blue sky, the wonderful sound of birds singing, beautiful sight of flowers in bloom. We thank you for your world and your people. We thank you for each person that walks the earth those that we can relate to and those who really feel a bit like weeds and choke us with their attitudes and with their behaviour and with their words. Lord, may we grasp onto this promise today that we are more than conquerors. And give us the courage to stand firm, to speak your words, to live out your actions, to challenge this world as Jesus did, so that we can see new shoots of your kingdom growing in the lives of those around us. Lord, we lift up this world to you. We lift up those people who are feeling persecuted for whatever reason. We lift up those to you who are worried because of illness, or lack of employment. Lack of wealth, lack of home, lack of food, lack of water, lack of so many different things, lack of love. Would we pray that you would meet them in their scarcity and bring them comfort. We pray for those who, who are battling the virus. We thank you for the encouraging news today about different vaccines. We pray that the hopes that are gradually coming to the front will be met with success. We pray for all those scientists and other researchers involved and the health workers still supporting and caring for those who are not well. We 
pray for government, both local and national and global, for wise decisions to be made, for compassion to be shown, for humility to be lived out, for honesty. And we just pray for our neighbours, wherever we're living. We pray that you would bless them this day. That they would see small glimpses of, of your love and your care for them. We pray for your church. We pray for care as we navigate the guidelines that are out there for the places of worship, working out ways of how we can be open and be gatherings again without risking ill health. And want to just lift up to you those those who gathered for that um, funeral up in Blackburn at the local mosque there that um, somewhat exceeded the 30 people restrictions. And for the Imam who's now been diagnosed with the virus. And for all those who now are having to quarantine for a week. And that you would keep them safe. And we pray for the local officials there who are trying to battle this um, spike in illness. And we pray for our families and friends and for ourselves. We thank you for that love that Paul describes. One that will never be taken away from us whatever we go through would help us to find moments just to rest and breathe in that love to really embrace it to enjoy what it feels to be loved in such, such measure as you pour into us And Lord, may that love overflow in all our dealings today. And so let's close with the Lord's Prayer as we say together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So I'll see you again tomorrow. Enjoy walking with God today. Take care. Stay strong. God bless.